Hello creative civil engineers welcome to civilocity this is the first lecture of strength of materials in this lecture we are going to talk about stress and strain so if you don't know anything about stress and strain then you can stick around but if you know a little bit about it then you can still stick around for your revision all right guys let's dive into this lecture Suppose you and your friend are trying to pull a bar away from each other and the bar is circular in cross section with a certain length uh, let's say 2 meters and you and your friend are trying to pull it away from each other like in a stretching kind of condition and I'm assuming that you and your friend are applying the same amount of force to pull the bar away from each other. Now what will happen to the bar? In this scenario, the bar will neither move to your side nor to your friend's side because the amount of force which is applied on the bar is same on either side. After that, while you guys are pulling this bar, I come to you and cut this bar into half. And which make me think about like what was that thing that was keeping it together? And I see that there was a force equal and opposite to the force applied by you and your friend on both of the bars and that was the only force that was keeping the bar together and keeping the bar away from deformation. Since the bar is having some cross-sectional area, in this case we have chosen a circular bar, so the internal force which is induced is uniformly distributed over cross-sectional area and the intensity of force that is force per unit area is called stress. So stress can be defined as the internal resistance offered by a material against deformation and which is force per unit area and this stress can be tensile or compressive depending upon the nature of the load and it is represented by this word sigma we used to call it sigma in our other calculations but here we will call it as stress it is equal to load divided by area that is force applied on a body divided by the area of cross section and its unit is normally newton per mm squares or megapascal and the tensile stress is usually positive and the compressive stresses are negative so now what we have concluded that the stress is resistance offered by material against deformation and it is measured in newton per mm square depending upon nature of stress stress can be of following two types that is the normal stress and shear stress now normal stress is always normal to the cross section and shear stress is a resistance offered by material against shearing force. Let's talk about normal stress. Uh, normal stress is divided into two parts. The first one is direct stress or axial stresses and the second one is bending stresses. Direct stresses are produced when the axial force is acted at center of gravity of cross section but for prismatic bodies they are uniform across the cross sections. And the second part of normal stress is bending stresses which are produced by bending moment. Right now let's not go deeper into these terms and we will discuss them in depth later on as we move more into these chapters. Now let's talk about shear stress. So the stress induced in a body when it is subjected to two equal and opposite forces which are acting tangentially as a result of which the body tends to shear off across the section and it is known as shear stress. And the shear stress is the stress which acts tangential to the area and it is represented by this word tau that inverted J. Now if you look into this figure you can clearly see that what is shear stress. Alright after knowing about all these type of stresses let's talk about strain. Now let's assume that the bar which you and your friend were pulling was ductile in nature and uh, while you guys were stretching it it got stretched up to 10 millimeters off of 2 meter length and here comes the definition of strain when a body is subjected to some external force there is some change of dimension of the body and the ratio of change of dimension of the body to the original dimension is known as strain and here in our case we had a bar which is actually loaded and the elongation or shortening of actually loaded members per unit length is known as strain and it is represented by this letter E and can be written as change in length divided by the total length. Since I assume that the length change in your case was 10 millimeters off of 2 meters so the strain produced in your bar will be 10 millimeters divided by 2 meters. You can change the different units of meter into millimeters or millimeters into meter depending upon your choice but the strain produced in the bar will be 10 millimeters divided by 2 meters and it is a dimensionless quantity since you can see that length divided by length will give us no unit and it can be tensile or compressive depending upon the nature of load 
and it can be of four types that is tensile strain compressive strain volumetric strain and shear strain in your case it was tensile strain because you were stretching the bar so the change in length due to tension divided by the total length is called tensile strain and similarly with the compressive strain if you guys were compressing the bar the change in shortening of length due to compression uh, divided by the total length will give you the compressive strain and the change in volume divided by the total volume will give you volumetric strain and the strain produced by shear stress is known as shear strain. I already told you we will talk about these terms in depth as we go into the syllabus more but right now you just need to know that what are stresses and what are strains and basics about stresses and strains. In the next lecture we will talk about stress strain curve of mild steel in tension which is done on universal testing machine. Till then share this lecture as much as you can help your friends and yourself too and tell me about this video in the comments and I will see you in the next lecture. Till then cheers.